Oh boy, here's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> I've said this before, and if you hadn't watched some of these other excerpts, you may not have heard me, but uh, we'd be in a crisis in our life. We've been married 48 years, my wife and I, and uh, we've been saved since 1972. And uh, But in that period of time, we have been in some real crises in our life. We raised six children, and God's blessed us, and we haven't had any insurance. We haven't had any outstanding hospital bills, and we haven't had any outstanding uh, things that uh, we were able to put our children through Christian school and uh, maybe in a self-employed paint contractor. It, <clears throat> we have crossed some bridges though that were very difficult and during that period of time my wife would say uh, are we having fun yet? <laughs> Be right in the middle of a crisis she'd say are we having fun yet? And uh, sometimes she used to get a little aggravated at me uh, I don't sing. I'm not a singer. I'm tone deaf. I can't sing. But when I get in a real sure enough crisis, I go to singing. And I start singing. Praise the Lord and hallelujah and amen. And things, songs of the gospel, I'll sing those. Paul the Apostle at midnight, him and Silas were in a prison, hanged up in chains, down in the second dungeon, standing in their own waist, and with their hands in shackles and their feet in shackles, and couldn't move, and it's midnight. Couldn't sleep because of their discomfort. Had to stand there awake. And as they're standing there awake, and it became midnight, Paul started singing, and Silas chimed in with him and they sang a song of praise and God delivered them from their chains. If you'll sing a song of praise in your time of trouble and give God the honor and the glory and the praise for allowing you to live even in your time of trouble have to have allowed you to be born on this earth to give you the gift of salvation that you may go and live with God himself forever in a place called heaven. If this be the case, how can you complain over a simple splinter or something happening in your life that's temporal or time just that involves being in time. Man's days are few, the Bible said, and full of trouble. We do not have a right to complain to a God who had us be born knew us while we were in our mother's womb before we were born. By the way, every man is born in due time, is born in his time, in due time. God has me here for this time. I'm here right now for this time. Do you know uh, whether you're here for this time or not? I'm sure that you are, you wouldn't be here. Now you need to find out what it is that you need to do in this time that would be pleasing to God so that when you do go to heaven, if you're going to heaven, and you're going to heaven if you said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul, you're on your way to heaven. Now you need to get to work and find out what it is for. Uh, listen to this, chapter 10 of Proverbs, a man named Solomon, who had asked God for wisdom, got wisdom. He said, a wise son maketh a glad father. Do you know what he's saying? 
He's saying, a wise son of God maketh a glad father. God will be glad in heaven over a son that he has on this earth that's doing his will and his duty. And not but a foolish son is heaviness to his mother. And a foolish son can be heaviness to his mother and his father. And uh, verse 2 said, The treasures of the wicked profit nothing, but the righteousness deliver from death. The treasures of this earth, on this earth, profit nothing in the kingdom of God, but to find righteousness and mercy and to do God's will, that is treasure in heaven that is forever. I would rather have two cents in heaven forever than have two million worth of treasure on this earth to leave behind. By the way, Solomon said, <laughs> what a fool that I have been with all the wisdom that I have. I have been a fool to amass such great wealth and things to leave it to a fool. Look it over. Think about it. Look over everything Solomon amassed. See how long it lasted after he passed on. When Solomon left this earth and left the scene, it wasn't but just a very, very minute, short time. It was all gone. All dispersed. All taken, all stolen, if you please, by the hands of those that were the very parishioners of Solomon. And so, I, I tell you what you do. You, you gather, amass a great fortune, and men have, and they have died, and they have left it to children who were not involved the same way their daddy was really say this I really didn't have any interest in what he did I really didn't care what he did but I do know this he did leave this pile of stuff and we're going to use it up and within sometimes months I knew a couple of boys that got $76,000 a year or two ago and within six months, they were borrowing money. They were selling the cars <laughs> that they bought with the money. They had to sell them off to pay the rent and to pay the house payment. And, and they got themselves into great debt because they had these little pennies, less than 100000 and went out there and made notes for much more than that, and people saw the way to get their handful of change from these boys rather than to give them wise counsel. They took their money and ran with it, knowing that within a month or two, they were not going to be able to meet their obligation because the money was gone. That's what uh, uh, ill-gotten gain will fly away. So Solomon said, it was a foolish son that was uh, a heaviness to those around him. And verse 3, And the Lord will suffer the soul of the righteous not to famish. God will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he chaseth away the substance of the wicked. Listen, if you're saved, if you've asked Jesus Christ to come in your eye, and you are following him and you're in the word, he is going to make a way for you to have substance that is everlasting. And everlasting substance is what you need. You don't need treasures on this earth. You need treasures you can take with you forever and forever and forever and forever. One penny forever is worth more than one million for 60 years. I'm telling you right now. And uh, listen, verse 5, 
He that gathereth in the summer is a wise